Hi, welcome back to another video. If you didn't know, I make dessert tables for weddings, but in this video, I wanted to show how you could put together a smaller dessert table, more like for 20 to 30 people. I'm gonna be making a raspberry chocolate gluten-free brownie, some chocolate chocolate cupcakes, and some blueberry cheesecake tartlets. These come together super quick, and I'm super excited to show you all the recipes, and I hope you find that this dessert table is less intimidating and super fun to make. So here we go. All right, I'm gonna start off with this gluten-free brownie mix and I'm gonna make it according to package directions. I do think that this King Arthur um, gluten-free brownie mix is a really good one. Um, you use butter in it and um, I think it had a really great taste. It didn't taste gluten-free to me. So um, you guys can see that I'm just filling my muffin tins here and that's a chocolate whip frosting. I'll be using it for two different of the desserts. Um, so starting with a block of cream cheese in here, and I'm just gonna be making my whipped vanilla frosting, which I've made quite a few times um, on this channel, I believe. Um, so I'm starting with cream cheese, and then I'm gonna be adding in powdered sugar, and then I'm gonna be adding in cocoa powder. And then I'll also add in a little bit of vanilla. Now, I add the heavy whipping cream in kind of gradually. Now. I'm going to add um, some of it right now. So eventually I need to add this whole um, pint container or two cups of heavy whipping cream. And I'll probably start off by adding just um, about half a cup of this cream. It doesn't have to be real exact. Um, it just needs a little liquid to come together. And then once it's beat out all the lumps of the cream cheese, then I'll add um, the rest of the whipping cream. So kind of just letting it smooth out before I add all the liquid in. All right, it looks super um, smooth and yummy. And so I'll add the rest of the whipping cream in and then beat that until it is stiff. All right, it is come together and it's nice and stiff as you can see. They're just nice and stiff as you can see. So I'm gonna transfer this into two piping bags. I have one of them fitted with a 1M tip and then I have another piping bag fitted with a round tip. Just round on the end, there we go. Um, so I'll get that done and then let's put our brownies together. Okay, so now I'm moving on to these brownies and they, um, I do wanna point out that I baked them in special um, liners, first of all. And they're these parchment liners, which is super like non-stick. If you try to break a brownie in like a really, like a papery liner without a good coating on it, it's gonna stick. But anyway, these will come off really, I don't wanna, there's one that's coming off. They really do come off super nicely. Anyway, um, I'm now going to take the ganache and you guys can see there's a little bit of a dip here and that's fairly common, which works well for what we wanna do. We wanna take um, some ganache and you guys, I prepared this um, for something else and so I wasn't gonna make more cause I have like literally like four cups of ganache, but um, I can link a video down below where I've made it before. But anyway, I'm just smoothing the ganache over the top like so. And this kind of happens because the brownie sticks to the liner and climbs that and then kind of sinks in the middle. So there's that. And now it is nice and smooth. And um, I'll finish filling the rest of these in with ganache. Again, I'm just taking the ganache and taking my knife and filling in that little divot there. And you're, when someone eats this, it's going to be super rich and yummy with all that good ganache on top. All right, to finish these off, I'm gonna come in with um, one of the brownies and I'm gonna put, and you could do this a lot of different ways. This is just the way I'm gonna do them today. I'm gonna put three raspberries, whoops, I have a little leaf there, in the middle, like so. And then I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna use my round tip here. And let me get this in the right spot, okay. And I'm gonna come in with my round tip here and I'm just gonna create little um, stars, not stars, little dollops around the edge here. And there it is. Okay, so now I'm going to make a package of cupcakes using uh, just a regular cake mix. And do notice that I did the gluten-free first and now I'm doing these so I don't have to clean my bowl. I can just go straight into making these. 
You guys, there is no shame in the cake mix game. I am not afraid of a cake mix, you guys. Not everything has to be from scratch, especially when I'm making several desserts like this. It provides a nice shortcut as I'm trying to get this done in just a few short hours. I then just dished it out into my cupcake liners, and the scoop does come in really handy, so if you don't have one, I would recommend it. All right, it's time it. to put together the chocolate cupcakes. These are probably the simplest of all of them. There's going to be a lot of kids here today, so I think this is a good one. Obviously, they might enjoy other things, but this is kind of like the safest bet for them. So I'm just going to come through with my chocolate um, whipped frosting, and again, it's such a nice fluffy texture sweet and chocolatey, not too bitter um, at all. And I'm just piping, starting in the middle, working out and working up. Okay, to finish these up, I'm just gonna come in with some of these chocolate curls. It's just gonna be a nice chocolate on chocolate on chocolate situation. And I think it makes them look really pretty too. So I'll finish that up. Okay, I'm now gonna put this tartlet um, shortbread crust together and it's really simple. It's just flour and sugar and softened butter and i have lost my paddle attachment if i had that i would use that right now but i think the whisk attachment will work i'll just keep it on a low speed definitely not trying to incorporate air here but just trying to mix this together and i'll meet you back when it's together okay it's come together in a dough now so all i'm doing is taking one of my little tartlet pans and I'm going to take some of the dough. And the way I just do it is all just with my hands. So I'm just forming it into about an inch ball, um, maybe a little more. You just kind of have to figure out what works for the tart size that you have. And then I'm taking my fingers and pressing it down and around. And then um, once it's all good to go, then I can grab a knife and just smooth off these top edges and my oven is baking off the brownies still right now so i'll just put these in the fridge which is a good place for them so that butter can kind of sit up and they don't um, expand too much while they're baking but when i am ready to bake them i will bake them at 325 for about 20 minutes okay so now i'm going to make the cream cheese filling for the tarts so i'm just adding a block of softened cream cheese and then i'm gonna add um, a cup of powdered sugar and some vanilla and then some whipping cream. I'm not gonna add as much as I normally would to my whipped vanilla frosting because again, it's more of a cheesecake, like a no-bake cheesecake um, texture that we're going for here. Um, so that should be good. And then I'm gonna whip this all together. And by the way, I do wanna point out that I'm actually using the um, same bowl from the shortbread and I just cleaned it out as best I could just with my spatula and it should work fine. So I like saving time that way. All right, here's the texture after bringing that um, no-bake cheesecake mixture together. Um, so I'll just move this out of the bowl and then once those shortbread crusts are cool, I'll put it in there. Okay, to put these tartlets together, you're first going to just take one of these shortbread crusts and you guys, these are so yummy, so buttery and delicious. But anyway, um, you're gonna take some of your cheesecake filling and you're gonna plop that in the middle there. You don't need too much. These don't really hold that much. And then um, for the blueberry filling, I've got some blueberry preserves here. I've actually already dropped a few fresh blueberries in there, but I'm gonna grab a whole lot more. And I like this because if you just put fresh blueberries onto these tarts, they'll kind of be dry. So we need some sort of a glaze. So I'm just using um, blueberry preserves and I did microwave these just to make, you don't want this to like cook the blueberries so we don't want them hot or anything, but just kind of melty. And so they're forming this nice glaze for the blueberries um, so that they're not um, just open to the air and everything. So then I'm just gonna take some of these glazed blueberries, drop them on top of my filling Oops, I'm doing a great job of making a mess here. And there, we'll put one more blueberry on it. There is a blueberry tartlet. All right, now it's actually time to arrange it into a dessert table. So I start with this Creighton book to kind of create some different heights. I'm then using this Buffalo check tablecloth to cover it up and that's just my preference for the look that I'm going for. And I'm just kind of 
pushing things around till I get the look I like. And I do really love adding this greenery. It's actually fake, but I do think it makes it look a lot nicer in my opinion. And I just think it's interesting. I'm also using a wooden cake stand and then some white ones. And that's just what I prefer, but you can use whatever you have on hand. Um, and then I'm just filling in my desserts. Um, there's no really right or wrong way to do this, but I will say that my preference is to put the darker desserts on the lighter cake stands and vice versa because I think they just pop a little better. So I knew the chocolate chocolate ones were the darkest ones I had, so I put on the white ones and then my chocolate raspberry ones went on my wood stand and then um, obviously had the blueberry tarts on the little stand and then sometimes I'll just fill in other stands with my leftovers. I still had a few leftover cupcakes and those will just be reserved when they run out. I'll refill them. So I packed everything up, took it to my cousin's confirmation, and it was a huge hit. So I hope you guys make this dessert table or make some of the components from it. I love a dessert table. Everyone gets what they want, and um, you just have a lot of different options. Gluten-free or maybe the chocolate lovers or people that are more into the fruity type desserts. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like it, hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!